So, my name is Lisa Schipper, and I work for Stockholm Environment Institute, which is a Swedish research institute with um, offices in various parts of the world. And uh, my research focuses on adaptation and development, and in particular, I'm interested in social and cultural drivers of vulnerability and how we can actually address these. have actually quite a vast knowledge on what works in terms of reducing vulnerability to disaster risk and, and also climate change risk. Uh, but the problem is really that actually applying that becomes very challenging because a lot of the, the, the work is done on the international level or in sort of an academic context or even on NGO level. Um, and trying to get national governments or even local governments to take that information on board uh, is the real challenge. Everybody has a different responsibility. Um, there are some people who are responsible for disseminating information. There are others who are responsible for educating in, in a school setting. There are others who are responsible for generating the information. There are others who are responsible for, uh, like the IPCC, for assessing the information and providing clear clear messages to policymakers. So I think we can't put it on one. We can't say, for example, that it's government's responsibility. And and I think um, it's it's our responsibility as an as a you know as a global community to make sure that we get the information uh, that we get the information right. One thing that I've noticed is that especially around adaptation to climate change, there are a lot of assumptions that are being sort of being repeated and I think we need to look at whether we actually have empirical evidence to support those and I'm finding that to be, uh, it's almost like a disease because once we start sort of, we get caught onto these phrases of you know who's the most vulnerable, the, the poorest are the most vulnerable. Well I mean that's a completely, it's a sweeping statement and it's not ac accurate in all cases and it suggests that poverty is the core driver of vulnerability which is also not true. So I mean I think we need to be really careful how, you know, without quickly, even us academics, quickly we start just taking those things as facts. And uh, and because the climate is constantly or is continuously changing, um, at what point do we say, decide that this is adaptation? And you know, if we look thirty years down the line, if these people are relying on rainwater harvesting and it's just becoming drier and drier, and they're still trying to do some kind of agriculture when everybody else has moved into a completely different sector, and agriculture really isn't viable in, in the area where they are, uh, we, could, we would call that maladaptation. And so As a global community, do, what are we prioritizing? Do we understand how to move towards um, a lifestyle that doesn't doesn't leave such big footprints and I think in some ways it goes back to being kind of environmental in our you know thinking but it's also about social equity it's about it's about a lot of things that aren't there and if we could manage to get somewhere on those problems I think we would also find that disaster risk is reduced but uh, we can't reduce disaster risk before we can get somewhere with those problems